So yeah, this was supposed to be a very different video. I recently went overseas for a conducting audition for the first time in a long time and I wanted to bring you guys with me and do a sort of vlog, but it turns out that it is actually really hard and it was a lot for my brain to try and get some footage while concentrating on doing a good audition. So I only got the couple of shots that I put at the beginning and that was that. So I thought instead of that, um, I would share with you guys some tips or habits or little things to consider when you are auditioning for such a thing. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I am an orchestra conductor, but even if you're not a conductor or if you do something similar to music, this might be useful to you too. Obviously, these are things that I perhaps struggle with and that might have nothing to do with what you struggle with, but some of the stuff I picked up from colleagues and friends that told me this, so I just want to share it back with you and hope that they help. And I'm also going to include some some considerations if you haven't auditioned in a long time like it happened to me because of the pandemic there are some extra stuff you want to think about first let's talk about the preparation so what happens in conducting auditions specifically is that you usually once you get selected to go audition in person after they look at your videos and your CVs you usually have to go through rounds and there might be I don't know let's say three rounds and there might be cuts between each round now what this means is that you usually have a lot of repertoire to prepare that you have no idea whether you're actually going to do all of it very little of it half of it and you need to prepare it all equally well because you only find out what you're going to conduct as you're entering the auditorium so you need to have everything in a level where you say I'm comfortable with whatever I get because trust me if there is one thing that you hate you're going to get that if there's one movement that you go please let it not be this movement you're going to get to conduct that number so what I struggle with is to make sure everything is covered equally. So if you struggle with this too, my advice is force yourself to go through everything before you go into details. What sometimes happens is I start looking at a movement and I go, oh wow, what an interesting note that the second flute has and it coincides with the best. No, stop yourself and go, I first need to know how the last movement sounds or how it's structured before I can look at the little note here. Really go through everything, big broad strokes, it's going to feel like you're not going deep enough, like you're being superficial, it doesn't matter, do it, and then once it's done, you can start going into more and more details and it'll actually work, you'll have the time. Obviously, if your problem is the opposite and that you never go into details, then maybe don't follow this advice. So that's study. Now, preparation. Normally, you know, if we weren't in the situation that we're in, I would have perhaps tried to work with pianists to go through the music, but it was a little complicated because of restrictions, so I didn't get to do that. And what I did, was really useful, which is I zoomed with conducting colleagues singing myself in front of them. It is extremely silly, you feel very strange at the beginning, kind of like recording this stuff on my own, but it was really worth it. I, I was surprised to get really good advice from my mates. I thought it was only going to be good to just, you know, get it through the body, like just to work it a little bit physically. Obviously, if you can get a pianist, if you are a violinist and you can, you know, play it for your family or whatever, do that. Just try and go through it as many times as you can. Ignore the voice in your head that says, oh no, it's not ready yet. It doesn't matter if it's not ready yet. It doesn't matter if you feel ridiculous doing it in front of your friends. If you feel ridiculous in front of your friends, imagine how you're gonna feel in front of a jury. So force yourself and do it is not that bad. And another really important part for me that someone advised me to do this a couple of years ago and it really did change things for me is to visualize. I am not, I, I usually don't meditate. I, I think it's great, I just, my mind cannot do it. But I do find visualizing specifically you entering the auditorium bowing or doing whatever you do before you start conducting, playing, doing your monologue, I found that so helpful. So what I do is I just picture myself being outside the auditorium, getting my name called or someone opening the door for me, entering, seeing that there's a jury, 
seeing that there's an orchestra, introducing myself if you think that's going to occur. And specifically for conductors, I visualize myself getting on the podium and then lowering my music stand because it's always really high for me because I'm shortish. So, you know, sometimes that's a bit of a struggle and you start feeling really nervous that it's taking a lot of time or you look awkward. Corona tip, I visualize myself taking my mask off because I've seen so many colleagues forget and then in the middle of conducting just yank it off and throw it in the air. So I just visualize myself doing all those insignificant things before I start conducting. So then when I am doing them, they don't feel so foreign and I don't feel so stimulated. You need to be able to focus in what you're doing and any external difference, you know, impulse, information that you have is going to add to your, you not focusing on what you have to do. So anything that you can work before, especially the entering, because that is the time that you're the most nervous, for me at least. Now in relation with what I just said, there's another really important thing for me, which is if you can know the place that you're going to audition in before you audition, do it. If you can, if you have time, go to the conservatory, the concert hall, wherever it is before you have to audition, you know, so you recognize where it is, recognize the entrances if, if there's something that looks a little bit weird. If you can actually enter, I mean with Corona it's hard, but if you could go and see a concert in the university that you're going to audition so you see what the hall looks like you know where where the rooms are i remember when i auditioned for my uni i knew what room it was going to be so i went before and i looked at the rooms and then when i was there i knew exactly where i was going i wasn't nervous about getting lost or being late and i was not being stimulated with new information i already knew everything so my mind was at ease with that. If you're auditioning somewhere that's not where you live, if you're traveling there, I would always, always prioritize staying near. I know it seems obvious, and it is, but I would rather have a place that looks a bit worse, but it's nearby that you can walk. Because A, it saves you the stress if there's a problem with traffic, but B, and most importantly, at least for me in my conducting auditions, there's always a lot of dead time waiting that you might not even know so you know if there's 10 candidates and you get 10 minutes and you go first and then the other round comes you have to wait for all those 10 people and then deliberation it's a lot of time and this last audition that i just did and i'll explain why i couldn't stay near and i had a lot of waiting time like three four hours between rounds and I had to stay at the conservatory and it was a lot. I would have loved to be able to go back home, maybe change your clothes, maybe lay down, you know, it's really useful. So if you can always stay near and prioritize that. And it's also my save you in transport. So always calculate that if it's $10 more expensive, you might spend $10 going back and forth four times. So now my experience auditioning after a long time was that I really was way more tired than I would have normally been. I really did notice that, it made me feel like a grandma. So here is a couple of advice. Try and leave the day right before your audition free from physical uh, movement. So if you can, don't leave the last day before you have to audition to do run-throughs or things that are very uh, hard on the body because I did notice being more sore than normal um, from practicing. And try and sleep well. So like I said, I had the 10 days of quarantine. Try and sleep well the first couple of days. Try to make sure you get a lot of rest in those days because what's probably gonna happen is because you have an audition in a long time, you're gonna get a bit of insomnia or it's going to be hard to sleep on the last couple of days or on the day before the audition and then you're gonna start freaking out about oh no I should be sleeping so if you make sure that you sleep well on the first couple of days when you're relaxed and not that you know anxious then you're going to be rested enough and then trust that you know don't go crazy I heard once I don't know if this is true that if you sleep bad one night you don't notice the day after that it, it like takes a day to catch up so I always tell myself that, 
I relax. I, I even thought in advance, I'm probably only gonna sleep five hours and that's going to be okay. Now, a very practical advice. If you haven't auditioned in a long time, <clears throat> Try on your clothes before you travel, especially if you're quarantined and you can't really go buy new clothes because you might have a favorite outfit that you've used forever, but trust me, it could not fit you anymore as well as it used to. And so make sure you try the outfits before you put them in your bag to travel because you, yeah, I, I had a couple of surprises and if I can close with a nice sappy comment, it was really nice for me to have prepared the whole audition with my friends over Zoom. I actually found the quarantine quite difficult mentally because you're alone for a lot of days in a place that's not your place. I wasn't particularly comfortable where I was and I think that, you know, thinking, okay, I'm gonna just Zoom with all my conducting friends and conduct for them really helped me. I felt very different after I started doing that. And then I felt like I went into the audition with like a team, you know, how tennis players bring their like massage person and coach and whatnot. I kind of felt like I wasn't going on my own, which is sometimes the hardest thing about auditioning is that you just feel very alone and isolated. So that was a really nice thing that I sort of discovered because of the quarantine, but that I think I'm going to keep even when I get to practice with pianists or, you know, when I get more chances of practicing before, I still think I'll keep it because it made me, like, spiritually, it um, made me feel really nice and accompanied. Okay, that's a wrap. I am going to now return to my previously scheduled type of content, uh, but I hope you enjoyed this different type of video and I will see you next time.